Well, hello everybody. It is Ronnie with Whip and Chain alongside Maggie and Lauren. And I wanted to take a step back and do a vintage stitch. Old stitches that just seem to get lost in the transition of everybody trying to do new things. Some of these older stitches are absolutely gorgeous. Like this one called the Rippling Blocks. It almost reminds me of a C2C, the way the blocks are done, but it's not, and it's gorgeous. It is more of a one-sided project. This is the front, and I just changed colors just for reference. In the back, you can see where some of your stitches are. So it is more of a one-sided blanket or whatever you want to do with it. This would be a beautiful little baby blanket, a lap blanket. You can do other things with it, but it's beautiful. And if you know how to slip stitch and double crochet, you got this. Now this is the sample that I made that I want to show you. So I would recommend if you're doing worsted weight four, I would recommend a five millimeter hook. And I, for reference, was using my ultimate favorite yarn. I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. That was for something else. This one's called Cranberry. And I'm not going to change colors, but if you do, the other one that I did was I love this yarn. And this one was called Sun Gold. I didn't think I was a fan of this color, but I absolutely do love it. So, let's get right into it. Now, the, this pattern does not start um, like a normal chain so many. Very different. I want you to start with a slip knot. Okay. Now, we're going to be building blocks like OC to C. But the one thing you do need to know, you have to do it in sets of six. So for every, every block you do, you need a set of six for your pattern to work out properly for this. So what we do is I want you to chain four. One, two, three, four. So then I want you to go now. People, I, I don't understand why some people don't explain it. I want you to take your hook. I want you to go into that first chain. But when you put it in, don't put it through where there's just one strand of yarn. You need to put it through. The two. See it? All right. Just so you understand. So I want you to put three double crochets in that first chain. One, two, that's my heater, and three. And you made your first block. So I want you to chain four again. One, two, three, four. I apologize about the dogs barking. So I want you to wrap your yarn and you go in your first of the chain four and put, make sure you go through the two. Okay, see it? Put in three double crochets. One, two, and three, and you chain four again. I do, I will say this is probably the hardest part of the whole pattern. And I looked for really good videos of this and there's, there's videos, some videos on it, but they're leaving out steps or they're adding extra steps. I wanted to do the original 
vintage rippling blocks so you could see how gorgeous it is without anything updated on it. You do four chains, then you go in that first one. Make sure you go between the two. And you put in three double crochets. One, two, and three. And then you just keep doing that. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three. It's pretty, isn't it? Chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then you go down to your first one. One, two, three, chain four, one, two, three, four, and again. And this is the very simple repeat for you to get your first row in. All right, I got six. I'm gonna do six more. One, two, three, four. Please remember to make sure you go between the two. It will help keep your first row a lot sturdier. That's the one thing Maggie and I really want to focus on is telling you all the little tips and tricks that we have had to learn the hard way. A project be ruined like I I an example I got I will show you guys sometime this year but there was a blanket I was working on I was very proud of it it was just gonna be a nice throw blanket for around the house when we needed something if it was a chilly night or whatever and I set it aside for a while because I just started doing other things and then I couldn't remember what hook I used well I ended up grabbing a hook that I was recommended on the yarn that I was using and here it was a larger hook that I was using to finish it and the blanket is is very uneven very noticeable and we have decided to keep it here it still works as a blanket but made me very sad because the yarn that I used on it I really loved. So I would always recommend that you keep notes when you're doing a project to always write down your needle size or I've seen some people take stitch markers and little beads and they put a, the bead number that the hook that they used can always do that too. And three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and one more. Two, 
two, three, four. Remember, sets of six. And three. Okay. So then I need you to turn it. Next row. I want you to chain one. Take your needle and in your chain right here. Bring it in. Your, your chain. I want you to slip your needle right in there. The first one, the chain. You grab your yarn and then just slip stitch. I want you to chain three, one, two, and three. And I want you to put three more double crochets right in where you slip stitched. One, two, and three. Then you take your next one, and I want you to slip stitch right into that same one that you did on your first one. Chain three, one, two, and three, and then put in three more double crochets. Okay. Now you completed two. One, two. Zoom me out. Oh, wrong direction. Okay, so you did two. So now the next one, your third block. You slip stitch again. Okay. Chain three. Put in three double crochets. Now in the same block that you just put the three double crochets in, I want you to chain three, one, two, three, and put in three more double crochets all in that same stitch. Not three, four more. I apologize with the chain, it's always four. So you put a total of four double crochets. Okay, so you got a peak made. So then you go to your next one. You slip stitch in, same spot. You chain three, two, and three. And put in three more double crochets. You slip stitch to your next one, chain three, put in three more double crochets. Okay, so this was a peak. Now we did two peak. It's always two blocks and then we do our next peak or valley. So you go into your next block like you would be normally doing and you slip stitch. And that's all you do in that block. As soon as that block's done, you go to the next one and do another slip stitch. But this one, you chain three and you do your three double crochets. Okay, so since there's always two, let's do the next one. Go right in, slip stitch, chain three, and your three double crochets. You following so far? 
it'll become more definite as we do more rows. Okay. So in this one, you're going to be doing another slip stitch and you're at your peak. So it's chain three, three double crochets. And you chain three. And then you put in your four double crochets because you don't do a chain. Okay. And then slip stitch and you do your normal chain three and three double crochets. And this is the same pattern that you run for your entire chain until you reach the end. Two and three and three double crochets. Okay, so you did your two. You got one left if you counted right. And the last one, all you do is just slip stitch. That's it. You chain one and you turn your work. Okay. So it's a peak. Your valley will become more defined, I promise, as you do it. Let's do one more row together. So you slip stitched chain one, then you go right into it. Slip stitch, you chain three, you put in three double crochets. And three. Slip stitch into your next one. Chain three. And three double crochets. And three. Okay, and then there's your peak. Slip stitch right into that peak. You chain three. And you put in three more double crochets. chain three and three double crochet four four double crochets okay if you've done that slip stitch chain three and three double crochets Slip stitch, chain three, and three double crochets. And three. And then your valley, you slip stitch in, and that's it. That's all you do in your valleys. Then you slip stitch into your next one, chain three, and three double crochets. And three. And you slip stitch. This is the exact repeat for the whole pattern. It's a very fast growing, easy, fun, fun project. But I do want to warn you, you do have to pay attention a little bit because you don't want to miss doing your peaks or your valleys or you're going to have to frog. So 
two, and three. And remember the peaks, you chain three, you do three double crochets. Chain three, and then you put in your four double crochets. And then you slip stitch into your next one, chain three. And before you know it, you will be coming to your end because this is a fast moving project. One. two and three and then you just slip stitch into your very last one you chain one and you turn and you keep doing the same thing but you can already see it's already pointing like Like that see so the the taller it grows it'll become very defined and you won't have to force it it'll just happen on its own well I want to thank you for watching this tutorial my name is Ronnie I'm with whip and chain I work alongside Maggie and Lauren and if this video was helpful to you can you please hit that like button and subscribe and if you hit that little bell every time a new video is released you will get notification of it and come find us on Facebook under WIP, W-I-P, for work in progress and chain. And I look forward to our next video. Bye-bye for now.